Hey guys, Az here at Shield K9. This is our road trip to Canadian Nationals. As you guys may or may not know, myself and Gage are going to be competing at Canadian Nationals. So myself and my friend Carson, who you may or may not see in the background, are going to be heading to St. John's, New Brunswick. So we're on a doggy road trip. We're spending two days here in Quebec where we're going to be training with a buddy of mine, JP. He has a really nice training group out here in Quebec. They've been very welcoming and it's been really, really good training. So you guys are going to see maybe some, some snippets of that training group. Get it here! Here! Oh. Oh, hey. You're making nice bits with him today. Yeah, he's biting good. Yeah, biting no, oh, happy feelings. Oh, super man. That's... Some small things, I think, tomorrow. I, I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll need a grip after. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Let me see your tattoo. Looks pretty good. Let me, let me see your tattoo. I can't revive this. This is smooth. I like it. <laughs> All right, guys, we're at the hotel. It's a pretty nice hotel. This is dinner. Not enough meat. Carson's got mac and cheese. I need more meat. the second morning here in Quebec. Let's see how the boys are doing. Great thing about having a dog trailer is if you have a secure place to park, it can be all the way up over there and your puppies can be down here. All right, let's see. Who do we get? It's like um, a kinder surprise. <laughs> oh, look, it's Vasco. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> hey, there's Gage. Look at these fucking pairs. <laughs> Read them together. <laughs> I don't know. According to all the latest science I've been hearing uh, on the news, this is possible. One of them could get pregnant. Probably you. <laughs> Gage, come here. Come on, Gage. Bathroom break each time. Go potty. This is how we do bathroom breaks. You got Carson all the way over there with his uh, big boy, Vasco. Gage. You stay on this side. Good thing about having an off-leash trained dog is you don't always have to be stressing. The puppy that I brought along, Bang Bang, does require a leash. So you're gonna have to see me do that. Gage, come here. With me. We're gonna have some water, and then we're gonna be tracking, so there's no need for breakfast. Kennel. Good. Let get you some water, hold on. POV, letting a puppy out to go to the bathroom in the morning. Today, we're gonna to be moving on to St. John's. We've been in this hotel for a couple of days. We're getting the dogs all buttoned up now. We are going to be leaving very shortly. So we got Vasco over there, Gage over here, and my new puppy, Bang, who you may or may not remember from the most expensive puppy video. Very expensive, look how expensive she is. <laughs> Could I get a small and a medium regular with milk? Guys engaged checking for IGP3 tracking. Dog will indicate articles by pointing them out. Can I uh, touch the balls? Yes, later. <laughs> Once he's tracking, walk. We're gonna do vet check before we leave today. <laughs> On the podium. <laughs> Oh no, he's gonna go for the camera. <laughs> okay guys, so uh, we went from Quebec last night and we arrived in St. John, New Brunswick late last night. 
and uh, we are now in St. John, New Brunswick. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, the bad news is I noticed a limp in Gage's right rear hind leg. It's the same leg he did injure prior to the regionals. It did heal up when I rested him for about a week. This time, I don't have a week. I'm gonna rest him for a day. So we're not really gonna do anything other than sightseeing today. Yesterday in training, I noticed that he had developed a little bit of an issue with the jump and the A-frame where he was a little bit confused about going out over the jump, coming back over the jump, going out over the A-frame, coming back over the A-frame. And I think it's because uh, I had that issue in his last trial where he went over the A-frame, came back over the jump. I've worked to correct that because he's the type of dog, he picks up a bad habit like no tomorrow. He'll do something wrong one time and that'll be the way he always does it moving forward. So I have to be very, very aggressive about fixing that problem. Unfortunately, it's very bad timing because we're basically out of time. And then on top of that, the dog's injured. So I was going to train today. We cannot, not with the injury. I'd rather he not be lame than he screw up in the trial. So anyways, though, it's beautiful here and we're really enjoying ourselves. All right, guys, so we're getting our car and our trailer washed. It got a little dusty, dirty. So we're in St. John. We're at Polly's Car Wash. As you can see, Polly's doing a fantastic job. Woo! Oh, nice. That's so good. <laughs> I'll say this. I'm actually surprised at how good of a job they're doing. They're doing fantastic. And for the amount that we're spending, you cannot beat it. So check them out if you ever come. Carson insisted we come here. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, guys, just woke up, getting ready now. We're gonna be checking in for the first official day of Canadian Nationals. So I'm gonna try and get a track in uh, if possible. So this is Gage's first official vet check. We're gonna see how that goes. And then we're gonna be doing the official practice. And then after that, just kind of hanging out with the other competitors and uh, seeing where the day takes us. We're probably gonna get some more practice in today as well. Nationals check-in day, so we're gonna track first at a very nice place. All right, let's go, buddy boy. This left turn will be interesting. See how we go. There they sit, right there. Yeah, this looks sweet. Track it next to a highway. Track it right next to a highway. Power today, boy. Oh, All right. Hopefully, Nationals isn't far. guys we're in st john we just got through the vet check we are looking for some coffee then we're gonna go back and do our official practice but you guys can see this is actually a pretty cool part of st john which for the most part unfortunately isn't the most scenic place i guess this is the good part of town we should have been here more all right guys so we finished our practice and uh now we're at a little field somewhere undisclosed location and we're getting some uh training in so i'm here with uh, jack and carson and we're getting some training in once we're done that we're going to go back to the competition our head judge jim chris So unfortunately, I managed to lose some of my footage because I filmed some of my footage on a uh, different memory card and uh, I think I left the memory card in the motel all the way in St. John. So I'm about to go on the field and I'm about to do my first phase, which is obedience. 
So you guys are gonna see some snippets of that. The whole video is actually up on YouTube unedited of my um, obedience if you wanna watch it in full. With that memory card, I actually filmed a lot of what was happening at Nationals with some other handlers and like, you know, just introducing you guys to some of the people that I know in the Schutzen community, seeing all the cool booths, the HST booth, the Gape booth, all that stuff. Unfortunately, that footage is uh, for now lost. But uh, next time, for sure, guys, don't worry, I will film this all on one camera and not do the whole back and forth camera thing. All right, guys, day two of nationals. We are going to the tracking fields. All right, guys, we're taking Bang for a walk on the beach. We did our tracking today. Unfortunately for us, it was 80 points. Actually very happy with the dog's performance. And so we had 80 points in tracking. Only protection is left. We're gonna throw a Hail Mary at protection. We did some little bit training on the side to see if we could bring dust a little more in protection. We're gonna ride that razor's edge. To be honest, I wouldn't take that risk normally if we were in the running to win the trial, but I literally have nothing to lose right now. So for now, we get to enjoy some of the sights on the seaside of New Brunswick. Right, Bang Bang? Bang Bang, come here. This is my secret to trial prep. This guy right here, Big Bad Jack, and Chandra, who knows everything about what's going on in the GSSCC. I don't know absolutely, I don't know anything. So whenever I need to know something, I just ask this lady right here. He holds the sleeve and does some other things that shall not be mentioned in this video. All legal, don't worry. Good vibrations, my Good friends. vibrations. All right, guys, see you next time. All right, guys, this is the last official day of um, the working championship in Canada. Uh, we are going to be doing protection today. Tracking, we got 80 points. The conditions were a little bit tough. Also, I didn't feel like the points are reflective necessarily of the work, but that's neither here nor there. Um, now we're getting 
getting ready for the protection phase. This is the last one. You guys already may or may not have seen my obedience as I've posted it in full on Facebook and YouTube. Just the full, really unedited, uncut routine. So you guys can see how that went. We basically got 81 points, to be quite honest. I, I'm not particularly happy with that score. That's my, uh, that's my opinion here in the moment, and I'm free to say it. I'm not happy with the score. It's not that I think anything intentional was done, but I don't think that the judging was consistent because I got 81 points without blowing a single exercise. You can argue there were some small technical mistakes through the exercises, and I would agree with you. I think my score was uh, much closer to 90 points. We had people blowing exercises, people making two commands, people with huge mistakes in exercises outscoring me. I don't. I just don't think that's right. That's appropriate, you know, and you guys are welcome to see the other routines and judge for yourself, but it's kind of put me out of contention for the podium. Um, protection is a huge phase. Uh, we are being judged here by Robbie DeJong. I am very willing to accept whatever score he gives me. I know he's a, a legendary handler and uh, he's a very good judge. And I know whatever score I get from him will be the score that my dog deserves and I'm very willing to accept it. My thing with tough judging is this. I have no problem with tough judging. You wanna give me 75 points for my obedience? That's fine. But you better grade everyone else in line with that standard. You guys saw my obedience. There was not a single blown exercise. There was no major mistakes in any of the exercises exercises. There were some small technical mistakes through the routine, which I'm aware of. I'm not blind to that. I know my dog's not perfect and I know the training wasn't uh, always perfect either. He gave me everything on the field. He was full power on the field, super active, super happy in the work and he did so well for me. I'm so happy with his performance. It was definitely better than his regional performance um, and I think on the world level that's a that's a 90 point uh, routine, 89 point routine all day. Anyways guys, uh, we put that behind us and we move forward now to protection. I did some last minute stuff yesterday that I wouldn't normally do if I was in contention for the podium. I took a risk. I really revved the dog up. I'm really trying to maybe get those extra few points. You know, it's ride or die. Like at the end of the day, I have nothing to lose. So we really pushed hard yesterday to, to make a little bit of a different motion in the dog. Maybe he'll be a little bit out of control. I don't know, but uh, we're going to go see. <coughs> Protection went, I think, close to as well as it could have gone. My dog was wide on a few of the blinds. He touched the helper a couple times in the guarding. No surprise considering that type of training that we did prior to going on the field for protection. I think it just fired him up, amped him up. Protection went the way I wanted it to go. I was very happy with it. Even though I was hoping for a little more points, I think the score was very fair and I think we'll do better next time. All right, guys, so it's clothing. Closing ceremonies now at the Canadian Nationals. We're getting our bibs on. There's my buddy Jurgen over there. Look at that. He's going to be on the world team this year. So congrats to him. Thank you. And Jurgen is the dealer for all Medbox trailers. These trailers you see now, everybody has these trailers, including us. And I like the trailer now that I use it all weekend. So. <laughs> So this is my final post on this vlog. We are heading out now after nationals. So again, just to recap, uh, we got 80 points in tracking. I don't know if I can get that video up. I was actually, I don't think the points are really reflective of how my dog did. You might think my dog did terribly in the track. He actually did pretty well, especially considering the conditions. But um, the video was terrible just because we couldn't get close enough to the tracking field. So maybe next time we'll bring a drone. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, I think the tracking phase is really where we drop the ball. Um, if I had, uh, if I just had a tighter track, it could have made all the difference between getting on the podium. Um, obedience, I got 81 points. My dog didn't blow a single exercise. Now, some people might say, well, that's hard judging. Uh, I think even on the world level, that's an 88 to 90 point routine all day. Um, you know, so uh, we're just getting some pizza before we head out here so that we can eat on the road.
protection. My dog got 89 points. Super happy with that. That was an awesome routine. He ran the blinds a little wide, but um, you know, other than that, I can't really fault his performance. Every dog has, uh, you know, a combination of training and genetics. And um, the thing with Gage is his obedience and his protection were almost at the limit of his genetic capability. I'm not saying that there's no improvements to be made. Of course there are. But when you understand the dog, when you understand the drives, when you understand the training, you know when your dog is performing at his absolute maximum capacity. And for me and his protection, he was very close to that maximum. He was at about that 95 to 98%, maybe 98% to be honest with you, with his obedience. Um, I think he was at about uh, 95%. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I post on YouTube and it's always interesting. Oh, he doesn't look like the gauge of normal, you know, like gauge is usually way more crazy than that. My dog was actually very active. He's probably one of the most active dogs in the obedience uh, that you saw at nationals. I wish you guys could see videos of all the dogs. And if you go on working dog, I'm sure you can. Um, but he was the most, uh, one of the most active and I think uh, close to uh, correct dogs out there. Um, so I'm actually very happy with his performance um, and people don't understand the picture that you have in trial is not the picture that you have in training when you have all the aids. Oftentimes there is a little bit of a difference. It's not that same level of crazy in activity, right? So um, overall, very happy uh, with the obedience and uh, with the protection and um, we're going to be back stronger. So we, we came in, um, we got a total of 250 points. Uh, we came in sixth in the trial, so I guess technically we are the uh, sixth ranked, um, you know, uh, Canadian uh, IGP dog, IGP3 dog. Um, had we uh, been successful at regionals, we would have been eligible for the world team because we got 80s in all three phases. You have to have a minimum of 80 in all three phases in order to make the world team. So. Um, a couple of people in the trial that scored higher overall didn't have those three A's. They had a 70 in one phase. So if we uh, make some improvements, especially on the track, which is where we're going to make huge gains uh, this year, um, we're going to be uh, hopefully uh, on the podium in the next Nationals and winning the next Nationals. So I'm not happy with how we didn't win, but at the same time, you know, I'm happy with my dog's performance, if that makes sense. Uh, big learning experience for both uh, myself and, and uh, I don't know about the dog. I don't like the idea of dogs learning in trials. I don't think they really do. And I think they only learn bad things. Um, but all that being said, I really need to mention uh, a couple of people that really helped me on the way. Um, a big shout out to Chandra and Jack. I know I, got, I already kind of threw them up in the vlog, but Chandra and Jack, uh, huge help like they really help me with finding places to trial prep Jack helped me with helper work if you ever want a helper they can put high level pressure on a dog right like you saw Kelly you saw um, uh, you know really Kelly's front half like the pressure he was putting on the dog like um, and then Dylan in the drives the pressure he was putting on the dog like tons of pressure if your dog's not ready for that pressure at the top level you're going to end up with a problem and, and we saw people ending up with problems so you know uh, jack the great thing about jack is he has a very imposing presence a big mistake i think a lot of people make when when they look at igp is they assume the pressure is related to the equipment oh they're using a sleeve that's not that much pressure now the pressure comes from the man in the equipment whether it's a sleeve a suit or anything else believe me I've seen people with a body suit and flatter stick and can curtain put zero pressure on a dog. And I've seen somebody with a hard sleeve and uh, no other equipment put extreme pressure on a dog. Pressure comes from your, your natural intensity, the intensity that you can put out. And dogs are excellent at reading who you are fundamentally. So really good helpers are able to put a ton of pressure regardless of the equipment they use. And Jack is one of those guys. So I strongly suggest, you know, if you're looking for pressure in a helper, a helper that can put a ton of pressure on your dog, you know, and prepare him, you know, for a higher level performance, I think uh, Jack's one of those guys that can really help you there. And then Chandra is really good with the organizational stuff. She's great with the video, um, and she really helped me a lot there too. So shout out to both of them. They're awesome, Jack and Chandra Dinsmore. A big shout out to the, this pig sitting next to me, Carson. He came with me. As you guys know, he trains with me, but he came with me all week, and uh, he was helping me too. 
He was always somewhat annoying to hang out with for a long period of time. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was great to have around. And then everybody else, you know, that uh, helped me along the way. I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. Thank you, and we'll see you all next year. Thank you, St. John. We're out of here.